the news that's short, sharp and shrewd. Are you talking about the podcast or me? <laughs> Both. Backhanded compliment. This is Up Late with Ben Harvey. Looks like Russia's stepping back from the brink. Early reports suggest they could be pulling their troops out. Well, he was putting us on, huh? <laughs> right? Which is a relief for all because compared with Russia's military leadership, the Western World Alliance of Australia, the US... And Britain... Hello, good evening. Good evening. ...was looking more Dad's Army than Navy SEALs. <laughs> Don't panic! Don't panic! I'm not sure what Australia's contribution to a war in Europe was going to be, given the Army is busy wiping wrinkly asses in the nation's nursing homes. The Air Force's F-35 spend most of their lives up on a hoist in the shop, and the Navy's rearmament program is being undermined by one of the world's most ruthless dictators. American and British military specialists who are helping us build our fleet of nuclear submarines can't inspect Garden Island, Australia's main submarine base, and where the subs will be docked. Because that base is on an island that's next to an island within an island. Mark McGowan's hard border is now disrupting national security. Think, Mark! When your COVID strategy is preventing an adequate response to World War III, maybe it's time to reassess things. What we are doing is saving lives and saving jobs. Well, in my view, saving lives and saving jobs, uh, saving jobs and saving lives, we've saved potentially hundreds of jobs and thousands of lives. Let's see how many lives a hard border saves when the first ICBM start raining down, Mark. If Nev Power got through on his chopper, what do you reckon a MiG-29's going to do? Dracarys. And this lack of preparedness comes at a time when we're under threat from an army of maniacs hell-bent on the destruction of our way of life. Common sense seems to have gone out the window. Crime is so out of control in the Kimberley at the moment that kids are purposefully ramming cop cars with stolen four-wheel drives so they can film it on TikTok but we waste, like, half a platoon patrolling an anti-vax rally. Inconceivable. Hey, you were a no-show yesterday. We were worried you'd gone to the dark side. Well, a man has one day off and you think he's an anti-vaxxer. <laughs> had to stay home to look after an unwell child, actually. And you didn't have the guts to come on this side of the camera and fill in for me. No, thanks. I see your feedback. Some people still like me. Unlike Mr 64%. I could list a dozen premiers who would have killed for a 64% approval rating. It's not the blue line dropping that will be worrying Mark McGowan, it's the red line that's rising. It's hard to get a dissatisfied voter back on side. Sophia Mormond knows what it's like to be on the wrong side. She's been barred from entering Parliament because she won't show her VAC status. We've got ourselves into a situation where a politician accused of sexually abusing children is free to continue sitting as an MP... But someone who won't show a VAC certificate isn't. James Haywood, who is charged with molesting an eight-year-old girl last year, says he is innocent until proven guilty and will therefore continue collecting his $168,000 salary and $152,000 in annual allowances, and that's fine. But legalised cannabis MP Sophia Mormond had to walk out of the Legislative Council for saying her medical record is nobody's business except for herself and her doctor. If you want to blindly walk through this pandemic ignoring the facts that you don't like, go ahead, is what she told her fellow politicians before proving she herself had an at-best passing relationship with facts by saying, vaccination has shown that it doesn't guarantee you safety, you can still acquire COVID and you can still transmit it. Yes, we know that, Sophia, but we are all less likely to die from it, you (laughs) moron. (laughs) She's the only Polly to refuse. Nick, I'm so bored I'm going to go stack a branch. Garan was the other MP to make a song and dance about having to reveal their vaccination status. Garan says he supports vaccination, but is fighting for the inalienable and universal right to medical privacy that should be extended to absolutely everyone who isn't a woman seeking an abortion or a gay man thinking about surrogacy. Turns out WA's moral crusader doesn't have the courage of his convictions and has quietly told the president of the Legislative Council, Elena Cloacy, that despite months of blustering and posturing, he was in fact fully vaccinated. How's this for ridiculous? Politicians are so paranoid about COVID, they're booting unvaxxed MPs out of Parliament. They've closed the public gallery and are acquiring proof of vaccination for anyone going to the dining room, gym or cafeteria. But 200 metres up the road at Juma House where the Premier and Government Ministers have their offices and spend 12 hours a day, 
you can come and go without having to show anyone your VAC status. Nobody's asking the visitors there. That would be inconceivable. You can't go to the zoo without proving you've had two jabs, but you can walk into the building where state cabinet meets and sit in the same room as the Premier and the Health Minister. No wonder they call it dumbass. Well, McGowan's promised us he's going to set a date this month. <laughs> what a teaser. <laughs> Some modelling suggests we need to rip the band-aid off pretty soon. Immunity as a population is peaking right now. It's only going to deteriorate as boosters fade and it gets colder. And the winter is coming. And we all need to get a fourth jab. We're going to look like that guy at a Hellraiser. Oh, no. Just a little prick. <laughs> you have been reading my fan mail. <laughs> I'm Ben Harvey. If you'd like to watch up late with me, Ben Harvey, search for The West Australian on YouTube.